Yo, what's up, everybody? This is the On This Date in MLB podcast. Yep, you heard that. It's the MLB, On This Date in MLB podcast. It's our first episode. We're hoping to make um, many more of these. And with your feedback, you know, we can continue this. Um, my name is Ricardo. Uh, I'm from Santa Ana, California. Uh, been playing baseball since T ball, like that age or whatever, I guess five or six. Um, I played in Santa Ana in, in a league called Northwest and just fell in love with baseball since. And I'm going to let my partner introduce himself real quick. What's up, guys? Uh, my name is Kevin, uh, 27 years old. Uh, fell in love with baseball around 2001. So that would be like, what, seven years old? Uh, didn't start playing until I was like 10. But I'm, I remember uh, my first baseball memory was that 2001, uh, 2001 season, right? And uh, same as you, man, fell in love with it ever since and just uh, just excited to get this podcast going, man, an extension of the page and uh, let's just keep keep everything rolling, you know? Yes, sir. And um, just for a little bit of reference, he grew up in Santa Ana as well. Santa Ana is um, the main city in Orange County, which or, and Orange County is a neighbor to L.A. County, in case some people don't know. Angels live yeah, right down sorry. the street from us. Go ahead. Sorry to forgot to touch up on that. So you played in Northwest, I played in Northeast. That's what uh, I was gonna say. Right yeah, across the city, yeah, opposite exactly. sides. Yeah, so kind of, kind of that that little rivalry uh, that, that goes on within the city, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah. we 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 actually met in high school. Uh, you you're two years older than me, one year older than me. Yeah, I think two years, bro. Uh, I'm class of 2010. Yeah, that's right. I'm class of 2012. Uh, so we we uh met in high school, played at you know Santa Ana High School, um, and you know whenever you got to high school or whatever, everybody always asks what little league did you play at, and and that's the beef he's talking about. I'm sure that's something that's common across the country, but yeah, that's just a little bit about us. And um, this specific episode, we're gonna break it down into three segments we're gonna go through the top five facts of this past week not the current week we're in the week that just passed by we're gonna go through those top five facts obviously there's many that we are not going to include but these are just some of our favorites and some that we want to expand on and react to a little more um the second segment will be current news we'll just cover a couple news topics share our thoughts and and then go from there and the last one we'll just make some bold predictions and as far as those topics for the bold predictions, we'll let you know once we get there. So you ready to jump into the first segment, bro? Let's get it, brother. All right. So the first one is um, from July 18th, 1970. The Say Hey Kid gets his 3,000th hit. Um, so we're going to watch that video. And whenever you're ready, bro, we'll hit play. You are you guys are going to see the video on the screen. We're going to watch it on our own and we'll watch it together and just react. Uh, whenever you're ready. Ready, bro. One, two, three. How about those old wind-ups, bro? We need to bring That's those at, back, man. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's so short now, man. That's that candlestick, too. That's so dope, man. Uh, 3,000 hits. He's, that looks like what, such a it looks like such a weird park with no uh, no bleachers in the outfield stands like that, huh? Yeah, yeah. Look at that. It looks like a... Like a regular part. Oh, that's such a good point, man. I'm sure a that's, lot of the – go ahead. That's another thing I, I thought was weird is how the, the, they came out to greet him like that. It was the, the league president. Uh, What was his name? Char, Char, Charlie Finley. Oh, okay. So nowadays I know we see like the teammates come out come out on the field and congratulate the player, right? Like when Pujols got, got his 3,000 hit or whatever. But that, I thought that was weird. <laughs> How yeah. the AO president, the NL president came out. Matter of fact, they should start doing that again. You know? Because <laughs> it if you think about it, obviously it's a business, but these kinds of milestones, it brings so many views and and it's just cool, man, because like it's good for us to know who the presidents are and to see their faces. So um there's a couple of things I wrote down. Obviously, you know, Maze is one of the greatest ever. Um he was a two-time MVP, a 12-time gold glover. He ended up getting 293 more hits uh, in three more seasons. With uh, and that and that time he split it between uh, the Giants and the Mets. But that's one player, man, that I just I would 
not even think about just jumping in the tap machine and going to watch him play in his prime. Anything else you want yeah. to add? No, yeah, he's definitely one of the Mount Rushmore uh, baseball players, right? Whenever you think of greatest of all time, he's definitely top 10, you know? And uh, I'm glad you mentioned the, the Mets the Mets stuff. Uh, I, I still can't believe he became a Met, man. That's one of those guys you just, you know, you picture him in a Giants uniform and nothing else, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah and uh, uh-huh. uh, uh, one thing I, I thought was interesting, he only had a, he only surpassed 200 hits once in his career. But he played for 23 years. It's so long. So, you know, it's one of those guys who's just going to accumulate that many hits. A workhorse. Yeah. A workhorse. So um, the next um, the next one is the next, seg- the next segment. The next fact, I'm sorry about that, um, happened uh, July 19th, 1986. And I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with this one. It's, um, it's when the cops and Four Mets players got into an altercation at a bar called Cooter's Executive Games and Burgers. Um, there's no footage that we're going to react to, but we will put some pictures up. Just a quick little recap on that. I'll, I'm sure Kevin will add on. Um, it all started like with a simple night. Uh, Tim Tufo, I don't know if I'm saying his name right. He um, he was a very I think quiet it's, player. I think it's tough. I think it's tough, bro. I, I looked it up. I okay. Think it's yeah. Uh, he had wanted to go out to get some drinks because he had just uh, his his firstborn son um, just came onto this earth. So he wanted to go get some drinks. And basically they ended up getting drunk. And by the, by the end of the night, all, all the women were around them and they, on last call, they didn't want to leave. So one thing about this bar is that it was very well known for athletes. Um, at one point it was said that the whole – there was a whole team that pulled up in a limo, like a complete team. I, I need to uh, look up what team it was. Uh, don't quote me. I think it's the Giants, the San Francisco Giants. But um, okay. it was just one of those places that where you would see um, athletes all the time. And it was a it was a, a place that was popping, you know. And um, it wasn't um, rare to see Astros players there having a drink after a game. But anyway, like they didn't want to leave. At one point, they say, um, they say, I think it was Tim Tuffle. He said, "We're the fucking Mets." <laughs> when they were when they were asking for another drink, and then the cops show up, and it turns into an altercation. Um, actually, two two of those players, Rick Aguilera and Bob Ojeda, had gone to the restroom when the cops showed up, and so it was Ron Darling and Tim Tuffle that ended up going out there, and then. There was glass broken. It was it just turned into a whole scene. Yeah, so I think uh, if I if I wrote it down correctly, Tim Tuffle and and uh, Ron Darling, I think. Yes, sir. He was the fourth guy, right? So those two yeah. guys got charged with with aggravated assault on the on the two cops, and Ojeda and Aguilar got charged with uh, hindering arrest. Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, yeah, so like you said, they were celebrating the birth of his child. What better way to celebrate with than with some drinks, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and, and some long and, uh, shots. I did. I did read up about that. That uh, I guess they called it a nightclub, but it had a weird name, right? It sounded more like a restaurant than a nightclub. But I guess yeah, that, that Cooter's a... Executive Games and Burgers. <laughs> what the fuck, bro? That's the eighties for you, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So that 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 was one of the the best and uh, craziest Mets teams, right? The the eighty six team, the bad so ones. Yeah, they they spent eleven hours eleven hours in the holding cell, uh, posted bail for eight eight G's, <laughs> and they're uh, back at the ballpark the next night <laughs> for the next game. Huh? Yeah, ain't that ain't that something, That's bro? Crazy. So they, that, they actually lost a four game set in Houston, but mm-hmm. uh, they, they ended up winning the World Series at the end of the year. So I guess that's, it's not all bad, right? <laughs> yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. And just one last thing it's um, it's definitely not something you'll ever see again. At least that's not what I think. You know, the way things are with social media and the phones, and yeah. you're not going to see that shit again, man, ever. Like, you might see that shit like across seasons. <laughs> I like got a different oh, yeah, country, yeah. but like I don't know, not 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 gonna see that kind of. And then also the last thing, bro, is um, I had seen that the cops made shirts that said "Cops Four Mets Zero. Oh yeah, 
Oh yeah, yeah. They were, and I don't know. They were I, don't know if, I don't know if you read that when the when the four Mets players they got back to the clubhouse the next night, uh, okay. some of their teammates had pranked them. They had like taped the uh, like jail jail cell bars like on their yeah. lockers. They, they, they had put, like them. soap out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like little little shit like that. That was, I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, I was reading that. I was dying, bro. That's good stuff. Um, yeah. you want to bring us into the next uh, the next fact, bro? Yeah, so the next one we got is uh, Pujols with the five for five day. Uh, this one is from July twentieth, two thousand four. Let's pull up that video real quick. All right, whenever you're ready, count it ready, down, bro. All Three, right, Three, two, one. All right, so it looks like we're in Wrigley. Oh man, that prime Pujols was just a problem, wasn't he? He was just emerging too, man. At twenty, at what age was he? Uh. Uh, we'll never know. We'll never know. We'll, <laughs> no, we'll, we'll keep that one on the low. Huh? <laughs> Bro, oh, just a uh, um, uh, man amongst boys. And who, like, obviously, like, you know that when you see the talent, but, like, to see what his career turned into, like, literally one of the top hitters yeah, of definitely, all time. Definitely one of the top, yeah, I would say top five hitters of our generation. Yeah. Easy. Oh, look oh, at that, man. man. That he, was... makes, he makes that fucking ballpark look like a like a little league park, you know? Yeah, like a little wiffle, wiffle ball stadium. Like they're telling him, throw it back, throw it back. <laughs> Farnsworth? Call Farnsworth? Yeah. And he was just, it looks like he just flips it, man. Like, it ain't nobody's business. There's an OG La Russa. Hey, La Russa's been coaching for a long ass time, man. Yeah. I remember I looked up, uh, he was, I think he was one of the coaches for the All-Star game, like, in the 80s, bro, and he's still fucking Shit. coaching today, like, goddamn. That's the third bomb of the day? Yeah, that's the third one. Oppo, so he hit off fields. Yeah, set left, center, and now it looked like it was a little more to right center, right? Yeah, you know what's cool is that he still does that thing. When he hits a bomb, he will be running around, him and he'll be doing this. You, you see, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like yeah. it does, uh, there's Dusty. Oh man! So th those first ten years he spent in St. Louis, uh, I'm pretty sure you've seen his baseball reference page. It's just yeah. full of all those black bold numbers, man. He was just league leading, yeah. So, uh, well, what one of our uh, one of our uh, followers commented on on that on that post? Uh, the first ten years of uh, me, sorry for keep saying that, man. No, you're good. <laughs> Pool the the first ten years in St. Louis, he he hit 331, uh, 408 home runs, 1,230 RBI. That's insane, bro. Um, do you have his name so we can shout him out? Oh, I did, I did, I did. Good shit. Yeah, good shout shit. him out, real so, quick. So, uh, K O H Tizzle. I'm not sure how he pronounces that name, but Co Tizzle. Uh, hey, shout, shout out to for you, the comment, brother. Yeah, Thank man. you, Coach Tizzle, for that little gem. A thousand RBIs in ten years, bro. Some players he, don't even uh, get five hundred. Exactly. I also added this part. He had 19, 1,900 hits, almost two thousand hits in those uh, those first ten years, man. Jeez, that's he just... probably probably would have won a, a few more uh, MVP awards if uh, Barry Bonds wasn't wasn't still <laughs> playing because he won like four <laughs> four in a row, I think, from oh one to oh four. Bro, and Bonds. <laughs> Put the league on notice, bro. Yeah, man. Like, I, I, I know Pujols isn't to that level of bonds. I wouldn't put him right there, but he kind of, I would, one of the, definitely one of the best hitters I've, I've seen, you know? Agree, agree. Definitely uh, a jam, uh, a blessing, man, to see a player like that in our lifetime because 50, 60 years from now, they will be talking about that, man. Yep. You want to take us into the next one, brother? Yeah, the next one we got is, uh, Ray Knight versus uh, Eric Davis. This one happened on July 22, 1986. Again, here we go with that scrappy uh, 86 Mets team, right? That grit. Yeah, count it down. All right. Three, two, one. Here we go. All right. So it looks like we got him. Uh, That's Eric Davis. Trying right? to steal That's third. Right? Yeah, trying to steal third. Oh, oh. Oh, with the overhand right. 
So after I, like, I looked at this video, after I broke it down, I think Ray Knight kind of caused this whole thing. With, he, he initiated it with a bump. He tried to bump him off third base. We'll, we'll see the replay here, but look. Oh, man, in an interview. Base, those old baseball brawls were, were dope. They, they were throwing hands, bro. And I don't know if you, you notice how quick um, those Reds showed up to back up their boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They pulled up ready to scrap, bro. And well, they, that was their third base. They're, I'm pretty sure they were in the third base dugout, right? So they were probably closest to the to the scene. But oh uh, yeah, when when down, they, when, it, when shit popped off, they were they were ready to go. Mm-hmm. I think this is right before where the where the Kevin where they show Kevin Mitchell just just fucking throwing blows. <laughs> <laughs> That's Carter, huh? Yeah, they're yeah. holding back Carter. Yeah. Oh yeah, Carter was the one who tackled Eric Davis to the look, 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 check out this. Uh, so it looks like he tries to bump him off the bag, and Eric Davis wasn't having it. And then the umpire straight up grabs him. <laughs> I thought that was kind of messed up. A few guys, a, <laughs> yeah, bro. A, a few guys in the comments kind of <laughs> kind of mentioned that too. How he was just holding him like, "Go get him, bro!" Like, who side are you on, man? <laughs> look at all the hats, bro. No, that's so true. I never noticed that umpire, man. <laughs> Secretly a Mets fan, huh? <laughs> on the low, on the low. <laughs> Holding back his brother, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That, man, you're right, man. That's something. The, those fights back then, they were they were scrapping, bro. Yeah, especially that Mets team, you know? Mm-hmm. Look at that overhand right and then the fire. <laughs> just oh, oh, yeah, he, man. He clipped them. Yeah, so they actually both get a, ended up getting uh, ejected, right? Mm-hmm. Eric, Eric, I, I still don't think it's fair for Eric Davis, man. He was just on the receiving end of all that stuff. But uh, yeah, um, uh, the Mets, the Mets ended up having to use uh, Jesse Orozco and K- Roger McDowell in right field because uh, they ran out of <laughs> position players. <laughs> what a mess! Um, I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> Sorry to cut you off there, but oh, no, you're good. You're good. I, I just looked at my notes. Um Eric Davis actually never commented post game, never commented on it from the article I read. And Ray Knight said he reacted because he felt threatened. <laughs> That's <our> so <laughs> <laughs> Sweet Sharon, but I, I think you kind of created that situation. <laughs> that situation, my boy. All right. right? <laughs> I'll, I'll play along. <laughs> yeah. That's something, man. So those 86 Mets, I'm sure this is not going to be the last time we talk about them, bro. Oh, no, man. All right, let's get into the last one. This one's a little more lighthearted. Um, 7-23, July 23rd, 2014. Um, Yachty Molina leaves some crackers for his older brother, Jose Molina, on home plate. So whenever you're ready, let me know. Ready, bro. Ready. The, the first thing that this made me think it was that it's just so dope, man. They got such a fun job. They got like, <laughs> he's it's just chilling, big kids bro. playing the game, bro. Yeah. It's just big kids getting paid to play a game we, we all love, you know? Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, he put them in his back pocket. Look at him, look at him just busting up. <laughs> and it's one of those moments that can this happen in another sport, bro? Nah, right? Because of how slow paced. This is like how many pauses You're we right. got, you know? Can this happen? I don't yeah. think so. No. It's just something so funny, man. That <laughs> they're the crackers. Um, so this one also made me look into the Molina brothers a little bit. Obviously, everybody knows about the Molina brothers. Right, right. But just a little quick recap on them. Jose, um, Benji's the oldest. He played for 12 years. He has a World Series belt, um, belt World Series championship with the Angels. Jose is the second, 15 years under his belt, two-time World Series, Angels and the Yankees in 09. Angels was 02 with his brother. And then Yachty, who has 19 years and still active like a like a straight dog, man. Two-time World Series champion, nine-time gold glover. And obviously, we're not going to get too deep into the stats, but this kind of um, – I may be wrong. I may get some shit for this, but – this kind of made me um, kind of connect the dots with the Ball brothers because, um, you know, they're, um, you have Lonzo, which is – he's great. Right. And then yeah, you have Jello. I mean, he's trying to make it to the league, you know. 
But then you have the, right. the youngest brother who's the one that's bawling out, you know? Okay, and okay. I see where you're going. I see God, where you're going you know? with this. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's like I, I, was gonna, I was going to I was gonna ask you that. I was going to ask you that. Do you think do you think he talks shit to, to the other two guys? Oh, yeah. yeah. I got, I got, he, he's the one with the most rings, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, so he's got the no, most no, rings. No, he has two, like Jose. But he's the one oh, with okay. all the trophies. With the, he has like and four platinum gloves. And he's and he's played the longest, you know. So nineteen I'm seasons sure, catching. I'm pretty sure he that's a that's something he could throw in their faces that whenever they they're getting together for Christmas or whatever, you know. <laughs> <laughs> bro, nineteen seasons in the National League, bro, catching, like all the same team, huh? I, I think that I, that's one of the lost things that you know that we don't get to see anymore. Yeah. When the players spend all the all their career with one team, I agree. Um, I agree. But yeah, I'm I'm glad you mentioned that the how they. Y'all spent over ten years in the league. The the three brothers, man. I off the top of your head, do you know what three brothers played over ten years in the league? No, no, no. Exactly. So I, I actually it was it started bugging me. So I looked it up, right? And as far as I could find, the the Maggio brothers were the only ones who oh, okay. who who accomplished that. Yeah, and I of course I've only heard of Joe DiMaggio and Dom DiMaggio. Uh, and of course, I looked it up this morning, and I already forgot the third brother's name. <laughs> but they actually all played over ten years in the in the game, so you—that's something you don't you don't see at all, you know. So I thought now, that was a pretty cool fact. Yeah, bro, I'm glad you brought that up because um, I think maybe maybe there's a chance that the Contreras brothers do that. Um, mm. what, is it Wilson Contreras with the with the Cubbies? Who right. They're talking about getting traded. And then the other brother, I forget what his first name is. Uh, I shouldn't know it off the top of my head. But, you know, that's my fault. Um, I think he plays with the Braves. Right. And and I think his younger brother is supposed to be really good, too. So maybe we might get that in the future, you know. But going back to those 10 years, bro, um, not too long ago, I heard that the average major league career is only like 3.5 years. Like, it's just <laughs> It's nuts, bro. That's, that's such a hard career. Uh, and, and you're right. You now that you mentioned that, and that they all played catches. You know, that's such a such a taxing position on the on the human body and all that shit for them to for them to be successful at that position is that's pretty cool, man. Yeah, yeah. So that will wrap up this first segment. Um, we're gonna get into the current news. Like I said, we're not gonna cover a list of topics. We're just gonna go over two things. All right, so we're going to start the second segment. Sorry about that. We had some technical issues. Fixed them. We won't be having those anymore. But um, the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, Juan Soto. Everybody's talking about him, so we might as well share our thoughts. Um, just a quick little um, summary. Um, they're asking, the, team, the Nationals are asking for young, controllable players, which, I mean, makes plenty of sense because he still has a deal that expires at the end of 24, 20, 2024. He's only 23 years old. Um, from what I read, he has two years left on arbitration, so that's r- worth roughly 60 million. And that that's basically two years of control. So, any team that get, goes for him, um, they're you know they're trying to set themselves up for the next couple of years, even if they don't resign him. You know, try to get a try to make a couple of runs. And from what I've seen, um, they did a poll with 17 front offices. And a lot of the front offices, you know, they have the they have the Padres, Dodgers, or the Cardinals up front. Um, what do you think about all this Soto madness, bro? Do you think he will get uh, moved? Uh, so I, I thought it was pretty interesting. I I really didn't think he was gonna get moved this year. You know, mm-hmm. I I feel like the, some of these talks really picked up over the what maybe the past two weeks. Um, so I think it's interesting that you found those uh, those three as a favorite. So I think right now, well, that, that's that's what I mean. I think uh, how you don't really necessarily have to sign them, right? I, I, I think everybody always figured that if you trade them, you're going to, you know, unload all your prospects and you're going to sign them for 10 years or whatever. Yeah. So I, I found that the favorites right now are the Mets, Yankees, and the Dodgers, as far as betting mm-hmm. favorites goes. Oh, okay, um, okay. Which, which which makes sense, you know, because all three teams have the the prospects. I think the Dodgers have the best farm system right now, amongst but them. They all have, yeah, they all have the the prospects to be able to do it, and and they're all you know positioned to make playoff runs over the next you know two to three years. 
So it would make sense for either either of those three teams. Um, I, 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 I think he's probably one of the best players in the league. You know, he won the ring at 19 years old, won the home run derby this this year. Yeah. Um, Dodger fans are probably really excited about about uh, him being in the All Star game. Did you hear all those chants? The uh, future Dodger yeah. chants. Yeah, it's funny that you say that, bro, because um, my coworker brought that up today that they were saying um, you're going to be a Dodger or you're a Dodger or something like that. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man, he just needs the right lineup around him. And he, I think he's just going to explode, explode and become like, although he is already a face, but I'm saying like uh, Aaron Judge type face where even the casual fan will know who he is. Definitely. Um, so as far as like what's going to happen that, with that, I mean, we're about a week away, so we'll see, man. We'll see if he gets moved. Um, so the next thing is the, they released a MLB released the rookie power rankings and we're only going to go over uh, three players lightly just to, um, just to talk about them and, and, um, and share our thoughts. So the first one is Julio Rodriguez. Um, he currently he's 21 years old. He has uh 95 hits and 346 at bats. So he might end up with like 150, 160, you know, depending if he keeps it up. His slash is a uh, 275, 337, 477, and 814. 814 is the OPS. So I just added that at the end. Um, what do you think about Julio? Oh man, I, I fell in love with him uh, at the home run derby last week, man. I, yeah. I so I have that. MLB TV package. I, I try to watch as much baseball as possible. Cool. But I, I really don't see that many Mariners games, you know, so I haven't really had a chance to see him too much. Yeah. But he's got some pop, man. I'm I'm, I'm impressed with that guy. And he's actually a favorite to win the AL Rookie of the Year award right now. Mm-hmm. Um, Close second is uh, number two, uh, Bobby Witt Jr. Yep. Uh, do you I, happen to have... Uh, sorry to... There's one more thing about Julio. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. He's, at, he's, uh, he's one of the rising stars on that Mariners team, man. And I'm impressed with that Mariners team as well. So uh, he's, a, he's an exciting young player, man. Yeah, yeah, I agree, man. He's He has a cool YouTube channel, too. You know, he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's changing things up, you know, yeah. and it's cool to see that, that style, that style, that um, the lifestyle behind the, the players, you know, because. We just see them on the field, and it's just cool to see them, like, being regular people, you know? Yeah, the um, insight is, is great. Yeah. Um, so going to the second one you brought up earlier, Bobby Witt, he's 22. Um, he's hitting 258, 301, 459, and his OPS is 760. He has 91 hits and 353 at-bats. So that's kind of on par with um, Julio. He's not too far behind him. Yeah, man, he's uh he he hasn't gotten that much uh, attention. I think I feel like more attention is getting uh, on Julio, but Bobby Witt's right right on his heels, man. Uh, it seems like he's he's putting everything together as as the months go by. Uh, he's hitting for average power. He can steal bases. Got some solid defense. He seems to be the 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 true five tool player, you know. And he's on my fantasy. And he's on my fantasy team, so I know he's having a good year. <laughs> oh, don't don't talk about fantasy. My team is in shambles, bro. I got a just dis- I got an embarrassing record. But um, yeah, man, like you said, he turned it up this past month, and it's good, man. It's good. It's always good to see these young guys turn it up and show out, bro. Because at the end of the day, that's who's gonna carry the game going forward. You know. Yep. And and the last one we're gonna cover real quick. Um, and this is I know this is just short and quick. But in the future, we hope to get into episodes where we just talk about rookies, you know, or where we do a whole player profile and and things like that. But right now, we're just trying to hook you guys up with our thoughts and um, our perspective on things. But we hope to, to expand a lot more and do longer form things in the future. I just want to note that so people don't think that, hey, they're just kind of like watching it and then, you know. We we do we will get deeper with it, but right now, like I said, we're just trying to go through it quick and share our thoughts. Um, the last one is Jeremy Pena. He's 24 years old. He's at 265, 310, 467, and a 777 OPS, 77, 76 hits, and 287 at bats. And um, he wasn't drafted too high for, if I'm not mistaken. And 
he's doing pretty well, man, to replace Carlos Correa. I, I don't know if he's on the on the injured list right now, is he? No, not right now. No. He, okay. he he was he was okay. right right before the All Star break. Okay, okay. again, he, he's on my fantasy team now, so that's that's how I know this. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. Uh, no wonder the Astros were, were willing to get rid of a or willing to let uh, Korea walk, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's kind. Of, you're kind of expecting the Houston to take a little dip there after they let go of uh, Springer and Korea, and they only yeah. sign out two way. But they got such a good farm system, man. I, I was really impressed uh, how they haven't missed a beat, man. That's that's it's kind of yeah. like the. Dodgers with their farm system, they just keep keep producing talent, man. That goes to um, for sure. That's a lot of player development. Huh? A lot yeah, of credit goes yeah. to player development and the way their coaches um, basically coach their players. Because um, yeah, like he's a big ass kid too, man. He's he's yeah. like a healthy size, and it looks like he he'll be around for a minute. Um, so now we're going to get into the last segment and these are just going to be some bold predictions. So you guys can really roast us, you know, drop in the <laughs> comments and drop, <laughs> Hey, uh, just, you know, drop that hate real quick. If you don't agree, but this is where we might rub some people the wrong way. Uh, we're going to predict our AL wild cards and our NL wild cards. And we're going to pick a sleeper team for Soto for fun. Even if we don't think he's going to be moved now, maybe, um, in the off season, whenever, um, we'll just pick a sleeper team just to have fun with it. You cool with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's get it. Cool. Um, do you want to start the wild cards, and or do you want do you want me to start? <laughs> yeah, let's let me let me start the AO wild card. So as it stands right now, um, the first wild card position is held by Toronto Blue Jays, followed by the Tampa Bay Rays, and Seattle closes out the last one. So I actually have Toronto and Tampa Bay holding on to those first two spots. And I actually actually let me read my notes. Okay, so I do have Seattle um holding on to that third uh wild card spot. I think their uh their run differential is what's going to going to help them with that. I really don't see Boston. Boston kind of took a shit over the last week, huh? Mm-hmm. I really don't see Boston you know, bringing, bringing themselves back up. Yeah, they and fell actually, apart. And Cleveland is actually right there. Uh, they're only three games out of the of the the last wild card spot. But I actually think they're gonna, they're gonna take the division in the central. The Twins are in that position right now, so I think the Twins will fall out of it, and Cleveland will will get the the division. What do you, what do you think about that? So just for anybody that's watching, um, just let them know how many teams um, from the wild card get in so that they – Oh, that's right. You know? So this this year I actually had to look that shit up again this morning because with the new MLB format, mm-hmm. um, they're not going to have that one-game playoff anymore. Uh, top seed gets the bye week or they don't play that first series. Um, as it lands right now, Toronto would play Tampa Bay in a three-game set, and Seattle would play – the winner of the AL Central, which is right now again Minnesota Twins, in a three-game set, and uh, you know the winners would move on from there. Cool. So for me, I kind of have it the same, and I'm going off for the run differential. They are the only teams in that American League wild card with the double with the double digit run differential. And Toronto's, I mean, they they're a powerhouse, man. They produce runs. Um, they have a plus fifty four run differential. And the the Rays in Seattle, um, theirs are more alike uh, with the Tampa Bay being 24 and Seattle being at 29. Right. So I do think that those are going to be um, the teams. And I'm kind of pulling for, for Seattle because of the way last season ended. You know, they've been knocking on the door, man. Yeah, they've been knocking yeah. on the door. So it's always good to see when a team, um, you know, they get closer and closer and closer until they finally break through and, you know, we get to see them in the playoffs. Plus, we want to see Julio in the playoffs, man. It's just good for baseball. It'll be good publicity. And we want to see somebody else from the AL West other than the Astros, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it, <laughs> the other side's going to be in the AL East. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, oh, that's yeah, that's a, so I don't know if you, if, you're, if you looked at the standings like two weeks ago. I think uh, it was Toronto, Tampa Bay, and Boston. 
that were, mm-hmm. uh, that were in the wild card. Like that, that would have been crazy, you know. Seeing, yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Four, yeah. Teams, four teams kind of coming out of uh, one division. Yeah, that's nuts, bro. That would have been crazy. So the NL, um, I have the the Braves. the The way it is right now, only thing I would have is um, Philadelphia and St. Louis flopping, like switching spots. Oh, you think St. Louis, St. Louis is gonna yeah. fall out of it? Um, I don't. I don't want to say they will, but um, I think that's a possibility, you know? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a possibility. And St. I mean, St. Louis is one of those clubs too, man, that they just have great player development and they're, yeah, they're yeah. somehow great, great always there. Yeah, yeah. And um, they have a worse record than the Padres, but their run differential is up there with the Braves, you know? It's mm-hmm. it's sixty one. It's a plus sixty one, and the Braves are seventy four. You know, it's a and and the the Padres are at twenty four. So it's a huge, like it's a huge leap, bro. Like even the, the Phillies have a uh huh. The one stat I don't like about the Cardinals now, now that I'm looking at it is they're they have a losing record away from uh on the road. Oh, oh yeah, they have a winning a record point. at home, losing record on the road. Yeah, they got the point. run differential, so. It's gonna be a tight race down the down the stretch, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a fun one. What uh, what's their lead in the? Oh, so the Brewers only have the a two game lead in the division, man. Interesting. Oh, that's that's a. So this turned into more of a recapping the standings. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. We're gonna change. Okay, so the... so so real real quick, I I actually think the Braves are gonna take the division, man. So I think I have the Mets. I, think so. I have the Mets taking the first wild card spot. Ooh, some people are gonna be mad at you, bro. Yeah, they are. They are. <laughs> they are. <laughs> Braves and that, that that what what do the Mets have? They have like a 12, 12 game lead at one point. Yeah, man. Yep. It's gone, bro. <laughs> gone. Yeah. Say so, yeah, bro. Yeah, you're right. It's it's so, crazy how like it happens. It feels like it happens overnight, but you know it's just. Yeah. A, a steady decline, and then before you know it, these guys are on your heels. But um, I, I have the Mets. I have the Mets, Padres, Phillies taking the uh, taking the the wild, three wild card spots, and I actually yeah. have the Card- Cardinals taking the the division in the Central. Man, Brewers are gonna fall out of it. Damn, that's a good one. Uh, like, Shout out to yeah. all my Brewers fans out there. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. All right, so for the last one is um the a so uh, Juan Soto sleeper. Mine is um I don't know if they they would be able to pull it off because they'd probably be asking for um uh, a lot a lot of their current players and I don't see that happening. But I would have the Mariners. Um, they can give up their 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 top prospect, the shortstop, um, Nuevli Marte. He's number eleven mm-hmm. in the pipeline, and they can probably uh couple that with Kirby. Um, I forget his first name, but I just put George. Kirby. I think it's George. Yeah. yeah, and he's a number 32 in the pipeline. And the reason I say that is because I looked up the farm systems. They have the number two farm system right go. behind there the Orioles. Go. And the Orioles are not going to make a move like that. They're just not going to do that because, <laughs> I mean, I don't see it they're, happening. You know? They're not there yet, yeah. Yeah, they're maybe in 2024 they can push for that when he's a free agent. Um, but that, that's why I have. I have the Mariners just because they've been knocking on the door, and you never know, man. They, they can they can do something special if they grab them and push push into the playoffs. But that's just a just a wild guess. Uh, so I'm I'm glad that you brought that up because I actually looked at the farm systems as well. Good, good. And so I, I kind of split this into two ways. So I I still don't think he gets dealt uh, before the trade deadline. Mm. Um. So I. The way I broke it down, if he doesn't get traded away uh, before the deadline, I, I do I do think uh, it's between the Giants and the Mariners. Mm. Um, Ooh, the, the they, both, they both can pay him um, long term, you know. Uh, but like you mentioned, the Mariners have the the farm system prospects, you know that that puts them it gives them an edge over the Giants. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if he does get dealt before the deadline, I like the Mets, man. The Mets have the uh, the Mets have the prospects. You're, the you're playing the, with 
You're playing with their playing emotions, with fire, bro. You're playing with fire. <laughs> you're, play, and, you're saying they're not going to win the division, is... but they're going to get thrown out. <laughs> you're a crazy man, bro. <laughs> but it's because I don't think it's going to happen. But I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. They're in position, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. That's a good one right there. But I don't, that's the thing, again, I don't think the Nationals train them away to, to the within the division, you know? Yeah, that's another thing, yeah. Yeah, because you don't want to see him there for the next ten years. But I go back to what we were talking about earlier. You don't have to sign him. You know, just trade for him and try to win three World Series over the next three years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just push, so, push. So yeah, I, I, I would, I would, uh, I would choose the Mariners long term. They can sign them. They, they paid Rob. I think they're still playing Robinson, paying Robinson Cano, right? A few teams are still paying Robinson Cano. <laughs> they're still, <laughs> so they're still they, paying. They, uh, Bobby they can pay him. <laughs> they can pay him. Uh, bring baseball back to the Pacific Northwest up there, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you, you were talking about the Mariners that they're still paying a few yeah. people. Yeah. No, yeah. my fault. That's why I brought up Bonilla. And anyway, uh, that wraps it up, man. That wraps up the first episode. Um, that was fun. Um, we're gonna do this weekly. We're gonna try to keep it as consistent as possible for you guys. And this is something that we just want to keep doing because our main goal is. Um, just to make baseball cool, easy to digest and and enjoyable and so that, you know, there's kids that, that grew up in the city like us. You know, we didn't play. We weren't talented enough or we maybe didn't get the right coach. Whatever it is, we didn't get to go to that next high level, and whether it's JUCO or, or college or whatever. So, you know, there's just kids like us, man, from the city that we want to connect with and we want to connect with everybody, but you know, we have a soft spot for those, those kids like us that grew up the way we did. Yep. And we're, we're just hoping that we can keep this going and we're looking forward to seeing you guys soon. You have any last, uh, any um, last thoughts, bro? Uh, no, nah, man, just pretty much uh, regurg regurgitating what you just said. Uh, just try to grow this, whatever we're doing, you know, try to spread as much based on knowledge and our inside of the, to to kids like us, you know, uh, just keep sharing and talking about the the sport we all love, you know. Try to make this sport grow. Uh, you yeah. know, they it's one of the the dying sports. They say, you know, it's kind of mm -hmm. kind of getting lost by base, uh, basketball and football. But yeah. you know, trying to trying to revive uh, this beautiful sport, you know. Yeah, I agree, man. We we'll do it one day at a time, bro. We'll do it one yep. day at a time. So as far as uh, going forward, we're going to try to have episodes every Wednesday, not the latest. It'll be every Thursday. Um, and we're going to try to get people on. We're going to try to interview people and just have fun with it, man. Not all the segments will be the same. We're going to switch them up. But, yeah, we hope that was en enjoyable for you guys, and we'll catch you guys next time. Uh, I'm Ricardo, and my boy. Thanks for seeing us, guys. Shout out. Later.